One gets to the concept of integration by considering the problem of determining the area of a domain under the graph of a curve. That leads to Riemann sums. And Riemann sums are combined areas of rectangles approximating these domains as well as possible and the integrals are defined as limits of these Riemann sums as the number of rectangles grows. In this video I will make this concept precise. Consider a closed interval i from a to b and an ordered collection of points capital case D, x0, x1, so forth, xn. We assume that this ordered collection forms an increasing list of numbers. If x0 equals a and xn equals b and in between xk minus 1 is always less than xk, then we say that this ordered collection d is a decomposition of the interval from a to b into subintervals ik whose endpoints are xk minus 1 and xk. So we consider this interval from a to b as shown here and we choose on this interval n plus 1 points. n plus 1 points x0, x1 and so forth xn they decompose this interval into n subintervals ik. We consider these subintervals. We do not assume that they would have the same length. So now, if we have an ordered collection of points x0, x1, so forth, xn, we measure the coarseness of this decomposition of the interval from A to B into subintervals by the length of the longest subinterval in this collection. So we say that capital case D enclosed within bars is the maximum of the length of the subintervals in this decomposition of the interval from A to B into subintervals. So in this picture it is clear which interval is the longest and the length of that interval is the measure capital case D within bars. Let f be a function defined on the closed interval from a to b and let d, x0, x1 and so forth, xn be a decomposition of the closed interval into n subintervals. We denote by delta of xk the length of the kth subinterval. So delta of xk is xk minus xk minus 1. We tag these subintervals by choosing points on them. So on each subinterval from xk minus 1 to xk we choose some point tk. It doesn't matter how we choose them, we may choose them freely. We simply choose on each subinterval one point tk. So then we get n subintervals and n points tk. These points tk tag these subintervals. Using these choices, we form the Riemann sum, capital case S sub D, which is summation k from 1 to n. The function f evaluated at the tag point tk times the length of the subinterval delta of xk. This Riemann sum has a geometric meaning. As long as the function takes positive values, the entries in the Riemann sum are areas of the rectangles corresponding to, to this uh, decomposition of the interval from A to B into subintervals. So like here, Ft1 times delta of x1 is the area of the first rectangle which is placed on the interval from A to x1, that is from x0 to x1, and whose height is the value of the function at the tag point T1. Likewise, f at t2 times delta of xt, x2 is uh, the area of the next rectangle shown here in this picture, and so on. As long as the function takes positive values, the entries 
in the Riemann sum are areas of these rectangles. But if the function takes negative values, then the entries in the Riemann sums are negatives of the areas of these corresponding rectangles. And once the function becomes positive again, one gets positive contributions to the Riemann sum, and the total Riemann sum for this particular function is now the difference between the total area of the blue rectangles and the total area of the red rectangles. Now, clearly, this Riemann sum depends on the choice of the points x0, x1, x2, and so forth, xn, that is, on the decomposition of the interval into subintervals, and on the tag points that we choose. We get rid of this dependence by taking a limit as we make this decomposition finer and finer. So we take a limit of this as the coarseness of the decomposition approaches zero, and then for many functions this limit does not anymore depend on the choice of the tag points nor on the choice of this decomposition D. So this is the process that we do. So the observation was that the Riemann sum summation k from 1 to n, f at t k times delta of x k, is uh, the difference of areas of certain rectangles depending on whether f takes positive or negative values. And this Riemann sum clearly depends on d and on the choice of the points t k. We say that the function f is integrable if these Riemann sums do have a limit as the decompositions d get finer and finer, and if this limit does not depend on how the points t, k were chosen. If such a limit exists, then we say that the function f is integrable. And if the function f is integrable, then this limit is the integral of the function f over the interval from a to b. That is denoted by this kind of a long s symbol with subscript a and superscript b, and that is read integral from a to b, f of x dx. This integral is the limit of the Riemann sums, assuming that this limit is finite and that um, it does not depend on the various choices that one had to make when one formed all these Riemann sums. One can show that all continuous functions are integrable over finite closed intervals. For us, this means that the elementary functions of calculus are integrable over intervals on which they take only finite values. And then, if a function is integrable, then the limit of the Riemann sums is the integral of this function over this interval from a to b. And graphically, this meant that a Riemann sum, summation k from 1 to n, f at t k delta of x k, is the difference of the air total area of the blue rectangles and the total area of the red rectangles, as shown here in this picture. These rectangles and their areas clearly depend on the various choices, that is, the choice of the points t k and the choice of the decomposing points. But as this decomposition gets finer and finer, this dependence gets less and less important, and at the limit we get something that does not anymore depend on the various choices, and that limit is the integral from a to b, f of x dx. If the function f takes only non-negative values on an interval from a to b, then the integral from a to b, f of x dx, is the area of the domain bounded by the graph of this function on that interval. If the function takes also negative values, like is the case here in this picture, then the integral from a to b is the difference between the areas of the blue domains and the red domain. Riemann sums have been named after the German mathematician Bernhard Riemann. 
He was born in 1826 and he passed away at the age of 39 only in 1866. In spite of his young age, he was a leading German mathematician of his times. His contributions to mathematics have been extraordinary and covered many areas of mathematics. Riemann studied number theory. In his number theoretical studies, he applied the function zeta s, which is defined as summation n from 1 to the infinity, 1 divided by n to the power s. Here s is allowed to be a complex number. Riemann did not invent this function, but he used it so skillfully that others have later named this function as the Riemann zeta function. The most outstanding mathematical open problem is about the distribution of zeros of this Riemann zeta function. In order to be able to talk about inverse functions of polynomials, for example, Riemann defined new concepts which are today known as Riemann surfaces. Here is an image of a non-orientable Riemann surface, which is known as the Klein bottle. Riemann surfaces have remained as a central topic of mathematical study until today. Riemann studied sets which are simply connected in the sense that there are no holes in the sets and that one can walk from any point of the set to any other point of the set just along points in the set. Here is a rather strange simply connected set. This is so-called Mandelbrot set. Riemann did not know of Mandelbrot sets. They were invented much later on. But Riemann studied such simply connected sets in general. And his extraordinary invention was to show that such sets can be mapped conformally onto the unit disk with some simple exceptions. And this, these conformal mappings are mappings which preserve angles. And they have important applications in many areas of practical study. Riemann's contributions to mathematics were indeed extraordinary.